Ukraine's president has flown home five commanders who were being held in Turkey as part of a prisoner exchange deal. The symbolic move has angered Moscow, which says it violates the terms of an agreement brokered last year. The group, which led the defense of Azov style in the early days of Russia's full invasion, was supposed to remain in Turkey until the end of the war. From the battlefield in Ukraine to exile in Turkey. And now these Ukrainian commanders have finally come home. The army is about teamwork. From today, we're with you. We'll have our word to say in the battles. The commanders led the defence of the port city of Mariupol through a months-long siege early in the war. As Russian forces captured the city, the Ukrainian defenders held out in tunnels under the Azovstal steel plant. Kyiv finally ordered them to surrender in May last year. The commanders were taken to Turkey as part of a prisoner exchange deal and were supposed to stay there until the war ended. There was no explanation for the change of plans as the commanders boarded alongside Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on his way back from meeting with his Turkish counterpart. The Kremlin has slammed the commander's return home, saying both Kyiv and Ankara have violated the terms of the agreement. For Ukraine, the commanders have become heroes. Their return came on the 500th day of the war. President Zelensky released this footage of him visiting Snake Island to mark the day. The Black Sea Island gained notoriety when Ukrainian defenders refused to surrender to a Russian warship. Ukraine later recaptured the island. I want to thank each of our soldiers for these 500 days from right here, from this place, the place of victory. As the war grinds on, the Ukrainian leader remembered those who have died and the symbols of Ukrainian defiance that marked those early days of the war. Well, let's bring in our Istanbul correspondent, Dorian Jones. What's your explanation for why Turkey let these prisoners leave? Well, there really hasn't been any explanation from any of the involved parties. Uh, neither Ukraine nor Turkey have explained why now that they have been, these uh, commanders have been released. But the timing is for a maximum effect for uh, propaganda victory for Ukraine, coinciding with the 500th day of the conflict. And also at the same time as Ukraine is launching this very important counter-offensive against Russian forces. One of the released commanders said that they will have a say in that, indicating they expect to take part in this uh, uh, offensive against Russia, which will only further infuriate Moscow, who are absolutely outraged about this. It appears they got no early warning about this decision. And this coincides also with Erdogan throwing his weight behind Ukraine's bid to join NATO, uh, which will be a key issue at the NATO summit in Vilnius uh, this week. Uh, so this does appear all to be aimed at an uh, at, uh, attack against Moscow. And now this will fuel speculation that is possibly Erdogan distancing himself from Putin, uh, the Russian president. President, uh, particularly maybe after this Wagner mutiny against Putin, that was the biggest uh, threat to Putin's rule, uh, possibly Erdogan sees him as weakened or could be sending a message saying that he wants to rebalance this relationship between Ankara and Moscow. But whatever the motivation is, it certainly has dealt a blow to Ankara, Erdogan's position as a, as a balancing act force between Ukraine and Russia. And that is a bit surprising because one of the issues that was discussed with Zelensky when he met with Erdogan was further the prisoner uh, exchanges and possibly even the return of Ukrainian children that had been taken by Russian forces that had invaded Ukraine. All of that's now going to be very difficult going forward. Well, Dorian, after breaking this prisoner deal and also backing Ukraine's NATO ambitions, how will Erdogan face Putin then when the two meet next month? And how, how will he ensure other deals like the grain deal, for example, remain afloat? 
Well, I think the biggest concern will be this grain deal, uh, which has uh, seen over 30 million tons of grain being exported from Ukraine to the world. Very important, particularly for countries like Africa that depend on this grain. Uh, that's due to be renewed uh, the next week. The deadline is coming up, and Russia said it's not is very uh, concerned about renewing it. It has its own uh, major grievances, and he said that if those grievances aren't addressed, it won't extend it. Now, Erdogan had positioned himself as the person that was possibly key to getting that deal further extended. Ended. It was him, along with the United Nations, that initially brokered this deal. All of that now will put big question marks over Erdogan's ability to uh, persuade Moscow to extend that deal, given the fact that Moscow is pretty furious over this decision to release these uh, commanders at such a critical moment in the conflict. Yeah, well, if the conflict hasn't, surely this grain deal will have many countries in Africa and across Asia too watching closely. DW correspondent Dorian Jones in Istanbul. Thank you for the analysis.